morning San Antonio starts right now. A four-day manhunt comes to an end as authorities have arrested the man accused of fatally shooting five people in their home north of Houston. What we're learning about the suspects moments before the arrest. And let's look out there with a live cam starting at 68 degrees this morning. Uh, watching the storms really uh, closely, I guess, for me later this week, if anything pops up, we're going to be checking with Mike to see if that would be a possibility. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, May 3rd. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. And yesterday turned out to be pretty nice and hoping for an okay day today. Mike Osterhage joins us now with a look ahead at our Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. Thank you very much. Likewise. And yeah, so yesterday wasn't too bad. Temperatures stayed down a little bit. Only only 80 degrees, so slightly below normal. A little bit warm today, a little more sunshine. Plenty of humidity. We're starting off kind of like uh, almost identical to yesterday with plenty of humidity out there. We got a couple of little sprinkly showers. As you can see, plenty of clouds and doesn't look like there's any, uh, any damp spots or anything like that on the road over there at 10 at 410. A hint of fog, you know, just a, a speck of it there, maybe a reduced visibility at the airport, Gonzales, slight bit, and then a lot more well off to the east. So like yesterday, we're just going to have to watch this as it tries to creep a little bit westward. Also, we are watching just a couple of showers out there right around the Eagle Pass, just past Del Rio. Uh, these, if they, they continue to hang together, will just slide off to the east. Not a big deal, but one or two of those sprinkles out to the, uh, the west. Other than that, yeah, there could be a slight little bit of a, some mist or sprinkle here in town. Temperatures are almost identical to where they were at this time yesterday. Mid upper 60s all around here. And again, we have got a ton of humidity that is going to be sticking around as well. Pollen, we do have low amounts of everything, so that's some good news this morning. Once again, don't need a jacket. We're going to be staying pretty steady. A patch of fog here, there, maybe missed a couple of those sprinkles out to the west. And then later on today, you're going to call it partly cloudy skies, 84 degrees. So the rain chances the next couple of days like we've had the past few weeks where rain chances are going to be on the lower side, but with the volatile atmosphere, if something does pop and this is going to really start tomorrow, could become strong to severe. We'll talk about those chances and see what's in store for the upcoming weekend as well. Here's a hint. It'll be really hot, getting hotter stuff. Mark. Thank you, Mike. Happening today, the man accused in a shooting rampage here in Texas that left five people dead is scheduled to appear in court. Our Sarah Costa is staying on top of the new developments and joins us now. And Sarah, what can you tell us? Well, good morning, Mark and Steph. This comes after the suspect had not been found by law enforcement for four days, a search sparking fear among people in Cleveland, Texas. That's about an hour north of Houston. So last night, the manhunt for 38-year-old Francisco Opresa, was, he was found after hiding underneath a pile of laundry in the closet of a home. He was caught in San Jacinto County. That's just north of Houston, about 20 miles from the original crime scene in Cleveland. He's accused of shooting and killing five people, including a nine-year-old boy and his mother. Officials say the gunfire began shortly after neighbors had Asco Presa to stop shooting his rifle in front of the house. Now authorities are trying to determine if anyone helped him hide the days after the shooting. His current immigration status isn't known at the time, and authorities say he entered the U.S. illegally and had been deported four times since 2009. We'll continue to keep an eye on this developing story. Mark and Steph. A woman charged with a DWI crash that killed a retired Converse assistant police chief has been sentenced to 10 years in a plea deal. Erica, now this takes us inside the courtroom as Rodney Rex Reiner's family and friends faced Jeannie Nicole Coteros in court. You took away my best friend. A letter written by Rodney Rex Reiner's wife, Linda, was read in court by her son, John Reiner. The letter described Rex's life as a family man, his career in law enforcement, and years of giving back to the community. All of it directed at Jean Nicole Kutros. On March 10, 2020, Kutros was seen driving erratically on Nacogdoches Road. An SAPD officer tried pulling her over, but she evaded arrest and went into oncoming traffic, hitting the vehicle Rex was in. Kutros breaking down during victim impact statement as Rex's daughter-in-law discussed having to tell her daughter that her grandpa had passed away. And now the seven-year-old child has something to say. At seven years old, wants you to know that you broke her heart and that her heart breaks every day because she doesn't get to be, because he doesn't get to be here with her anymore. Others to speak included former Converse Police Chief Rick Jamison and Converse Mayor Al Suarez. 
Today is all about accountability, about your accountability for your actions, your choices. This was no accident, this was choices. My hope is that you serve the entire maximum time. The evading arrest charge was waived as a part of the plea deal, so it was just 10 year sentence for the intoxication manslaughter charge. She will have to serve half before she's eligible for parole. At the Kedena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. A former FBI supervisory special agent has been arrested on charges related to the January 6, 2021 U.S. Capitol breach. Jared Wise was arrested this week in Oregon. He has not yet entered a formal plea on the four federal crimes he's charged with, including illegally entering and remaining in the Capitol building. Investigators say Wise entered the Capitol, confronted officers, and shouted kill him multiple times to rioters who were attacking police in front of him. The Justice Department has charged more than 1,000 people in the attack on the Capitol, including several active or former members of law enforcement. The Biden administration is deploying more troops to the southern border. That comes just days before Title 42's policy is set to expire. That policy allowed the U.S. to expel asylum seekers due to concerns about COVID. Now, without that policy, border agents are bracing for a flood of migrants. Here's ABC's Justin Finch to explain the new action the White House is taking. This morning, with the expiration of Title 42 looming, the Pentagon says the first of 1,500 active duty troops could arrive at the border as soon as next week. In light of the changes on May 11th and the uh, anticipated surge, uh, DHS did reach out and, and request this support. Title 42 allowed the U.S. to reject migrants based on COVID concerns, but that will no longer be possible with the COVID health emergency expiring May 11th. And now Border Patrol agents say they urgently need help to process the expected surge of migrants, which could top 10,000 per day. I don't have enough agents. I don't have enough infrastructure. I don't have enough technology. I have other areas where I think our agents have really locked down the border security situation. The White House says the troops will deploy for 90 days, but only in a support role to free up border agents to deal with migrants directly. These personnel will be performing administrative tasks like data entry and warehouse support. They will not be performing law enforcement functions. But President Biden's former director for border management is slamming the decision to send troops, saying deploying military personnel suggests a concerning lack of readiness for this transition. The situation has escalated into a greater emergency that will once again lead to troops in border communities. Republicans have blamed President Biden for easing border restrictions and making this crisis worse. But the White House says any meaningful immigration reform needs to come from Congress, not the president. Meanwhile, some breaking news overnight. Mexico has agreed to continue accepting migrants from at least four countries who are expelled by the U.S. Analysts say this will help act as a deterrent for those making the journey north. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Just getting started, 438, 68 degrees. Early voting ended yesterday. Coming up next, what one political consultant in San Antonio is saying about who is being seen more at the polls and why. I got out there yesterday, wasn't too bad. Not Just bad. like about a one minute wait time in and out. Not bad for the last day of early voting. And done, right? Yeah, 1604 right now, Northwest Military. Kind of a blurry shot, but traffic looks great right there in both directions of Loop 1604. And looking out there with live cam, not too bad this morning. Very quiet. Of course, uh, Mike is watching the chance of storms for maybe tomorrow coming through some of our area. Today, not so bad. Just things expect to be heating up. We'll get all the details with him later on. Early voting for the May 6th the election wrapped up yesterday. We spoke with political consultant Laura, Laura Barbarena who says San Antonio voter turnout appears to be similar to other years. Barbarina says there are more Republican voters in the mix than normal. She released the controversial Proposition A, which aims to decriminalize marijuana and expand the city's site and release program, is helping bring out voters. Yeah, supporters and opponents are pouring money into campaigns on both sides. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a full breakdown of Prop A. Just look for this article on our website to learn more. Plus, if you didn't make it out to the polls for early voting, you can still vote on this election day, this Saturday, May 6th. If you scan this QR code, it'll take you to our Vote 2023 tab on KSAT.com. We've got everything you need to know before you head to the polls. 
Time now is 442 and 68 degrees for now. Still ahead of Consumer Reports, investigation revealed some cons to technology. We're going to tell you how it can discriminate in medicine, home loans, and more. In this morning's GMA First Look, an alarming new scam fueled by AI technology. Because they actually used his voice, uh, made it that much more real. Lee Hall says his parents received a distress call they thought was their grandson Christian. He told my father or his grandfather that he was vacationing in Mexico with his friends, got in trouble, scared to death. The voice so convincing, pleading for help and money, but the person on the other line wasn't their grandson at all. The story really hit home to my father because he said, Grandpa, this is Christian and really mimicked his voice. So I think it became very visceral for him. He believed it. Unfortunately for him, it cost him a thousand plus dollars. And the halls aren't alone. Impersonator scams were the highest reported scams in 2022. And we'll have much more coming up at 7 a.m. Plus the expert tips to protect yourself. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And technology is supposed to make our lives better, but what if it discriminates? A consumer report investigation found that it does in medicine, home loans, and more. 12 Under Sides' Marilyn Moritz looks at how new tech can spread old biases. For decades, people of color were shut out of home ownership, a practice called redlining. It's now illegal, but we still see similar results in a digital world. The information used in redlining has largely been fed into new algorithms that are essentially doing the same kind of thing without the racist overtones. A new Consumer Reports docuseries called Bad Input sheds light on ways technology is failing in home lending, medicine, facial recognition and security. It all raises the question, can technology be racist? The answer is yes. If tech is fed bad information, it will continue to give us bad outputs. This device is an example. It's a pulse oximeter. You just put it on your fingertip and it reads your oxygen level. During the pandemic, oximeters helped save lives, but a University of Michigan study showed that the technology was not as accurate for black patients compared to white. People of color were presenting and getting wrong readings. It delayed the care that they were able to receive and could really have some dire consequences. If you're showing up and your blood oxygen level is incorrect, then there's facial recognition technology. It's everywhere, on your phone, the store self-checkout, or just standing in a line where security is scanning. We've seen cases across the country of people being misidentified and facing criminal charges. For more about discrimination and technology, we have a link to the series Bad Input on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's check the Rose Trans Guy looking at Loop 1604 at Northwest Military where things are moving. I didn't see any problems on the way to work this morning, and mm -mm. Mark's looking at the website and looks okay. So yeah, far. just disabled vehicle, uh, 35, 410. Um, I don't know how many other information. It looks like southbound 35 at uh, Loop 1604. We'll just watch out for that. Yes, ma'am. And again, this morning, starting off like yesterday with, uh, you know, maybe a, a hint of fog or some mist somewhere. There's not a lot. There are a couple of sprinkles out to the west. But then, and, and kind of jumping ahead, the next few days, you know, we've been talking about the chance for severe weather. But like the past few weeks where, you know, we've been saying it's not a great chance of getting rain period but if something pops with the atmosphere being so volatile so that's what we're going to have to watch out for the next few days first of all wow what a beautiful picture love that how great looking there thank you very much for that one oscar our sun has been around for over four billion years Definitely haven't been watching enough, so that's a great shot. Thank you very much. All right, got a lot of clouds hanging around here. We will see more sunshine, though, later on this afternoon. And we do have a couple of uh, sprinkly showers out here. And right out there, just past uh, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, this is heading in toward uh, Uvalde. Just a few of these. They're actually looking like they are starting to. This one looked like it might try to kind of build up a little bit right there, and then it's sort of dying down. So these things are just going to hang on in here, a uh, free little shower, and then sort of fizzle on out. Other than that, there's nothing being picked up on radar elsewhere. And as far as visibility, all right, Gonzales is now down to five miles. 
very similar situation to yesterday where it started out to the east. The fog did uh, Victoria, a little bit of fog as well. And then that one little hint. So obviously not a lot. It's not a big deal, but as the morning rolls on, we'll have to watch out for a bit more of this. Got that 10% chance to cover some of those little sprinkly showers out to the west and if a speck of mist decides to show up steady temperatures over the next couple of hours and we'll start to see more sunshine a little bit later on 78 at noon and we're going to top off at 84 later on today normal high 83 so right in the ballpark a little bit warmer than yesterday thanks to more sunshine we had some of those clouds hanging on in here yesterday and so we stayed at 80 now here's the computer models going in through this afternoon some sunshine thrown in a couple of clouds here and there and then we go into tomorrow now it depends on which computer model you look at as far as what may happen tomorrow night this one is a bit more aggressive we've got a maybe you know same start tomorrow morning a couple of sprinkles here and there then we get into dinner time and this one has a few of those thunderstorms developing out there to the uh, west of us and uh, there's a pocket that wants to stay down to the south there's another model that agrees on that this comes through in the overnight hours some of those may become strong too severe different long range computer model this one really doesn't have anything for tomorrow night at all it's got a few uh, showers popping up here later Friday same thing during the day on Saturday now, as far as severe, though, we still have that isolated to scattered chance for a couple of strong to severe storms. This is going to be tomorrow and then again on Friday, the same situation. This just goes three days out. But my guess would be tomorrow. This will then also cover on Saturday because we're going to have the same situation with that volatile atmosphere. However, low chances of anything popping up 78 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 84, partly cloudy and yeah, plenty of humidity out there. Then tomorrow we have that chance for a couple of showers out there. They could be strong to severe. Some of the storms later on in the evening, high winds hail biggest threats. Same thing Friday. Notice how rain chances are only about 30%. So this is not a sure thing. But you just got to kind of watch out each and every day. It does get hotter as we go into the weekend, looking at a lot of 90s. Mm, that's for sure. And humidity to boot. Oh, OK. We'll be prepared then. Thank you, Mike. 452, 68 degrees. Next, the latest in Hollywood, including a new exhibit featuring Taylor Swift's top rated outfits. Pick three numbers, 969, Fireball 9. Daily four numbers, 1274, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 5, 7, 13, 18, 24. And your Mega Millions, 3, 15, 16, 32, 41. Mega Ball 9, Mega Flyer 2. Good luck. Rob McElhenney and Ryan Reynolds joined the parade in North Wales after the team they bought was promoted back into the Football League. Following Reynolds and McElhenney's sizable investment in the team, it was all filmed for the FX docuseries Welcome to Wrexham. Forget all of the fancy stars and their fancy clothes at the Met Gala. It was a cockroach that stole the show Monday night. The insect fit right in with the color palette of the night, mostly black and white, going viral among stars including Rihanna, Billie Eilish, Jared Leto, and more. But the cockroach's 15 minutes of fame had a typical tragic ending, eventually being stepped on by someone's undoubtedly expensive shoes. Speaking of fashion, you can now see some of Taylor Swift's top outfits at the Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville. As Swift is in her Eras Tour, the exhibit is called Through Taylor Swift's Eras, 10 Iconic Costumes, representing her 10 studio albums. If you want to see it, get to Nashville by the end of the month. And Mad Men Emmy nominee Christina Hendricks is 48 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, really Los Angeles. 456, 67 degrees. As more calls to the new 988 suicide prevention lifeline continue to pour in, more funding is needed. Coming up, how one San Antonio man is helping bring the issue to the Texas legislature. As far as the roads go and problems, not a so far. 1604 at Weissman looking really good right now. We'll keep you updated. Steve Cavazos has walked into the studio. He joins us now for the next uh, two hours. Be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Outside with live cam, still on the lookout for a shower or st storm. So far this morning, looking really good out there. Just lots of clouds and humidity, which is normal this time of year as we take a look at the San Antonio skyline. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. That's May 3rd. Thanks for joining us. Yes, April went by very quickly, and here we are in May, and, you know, the chance of severe weather as well. Mike, I guess this, this sounds, uh, could you put it this in like a baseball metaphor? There could be a few hits, but no, there's not going to be a bunch of home runs, right, as 
far as storm chances? No, but uh, I guess most folks would be striking out. But if somebody does get a hit, it's going over the fence. But this is not today. This doesn't start until tomorrow. So this morning we are starting off like yesterday. We've got temperatures identical, 68, 2.65. So enough humidity out there, 90% humidity. Uh, perhaps a little bit of mist here and there. We're going to make it up to 84 later on today. That's uh, more of a difference. Yesterday we had a lot of clouds. We stayed at 80, so we're going to be 4 or 5 degrees warmer than yesterday. As far as the aquifer, you know, the past few days it has continued to go up, although it went down six tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading, still well below average. And of course, we do have light amounts of all of the allergens across the board, mold, grass, oak, as well as pecan. Now, once again, this morning, we've got just a couple little sprinkles out there. I'm going to show you that in a moment. First of all, visibility again is not bad, but almost identical to yesterday, starting to show up over there to the east in Gonzales, some of that fog and like was the case yesterday, that will start to thicken up a little bit, a bit more heading over in toward Victoria to mile and quarter visibility, Beeville at five miles, and then a lot more further on down to the uh, south. Now, as far as any of these showers, as you can see, just a couple of them out here to the west, they had been trying to build up right there in uh, northern Webb County, but or that is continuing to work its way off to the east and sort of dying down just a little bit. And that's all that's showing up as of right now. A few more coming across the uh, the river from the mountains of Mexico there. But uh, yeah, that that's going to be it. And as far as the rest of the area, temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s around here. And of course, we've got plenty of humidity. So that's going to be sticking around. Partly cloudy, mid 80s today. Tomorrow, a couple of showers, maybe an evening thunderstorm or two, and some of those could be strong to potentially severe. But again, rain chances are not that great. But if something pops, it can very easily turn severe just because the atmosphere is so volatile. Same situation on Friday. It's going to get hotter on Friday and over the weekend. Pretty much the same situation. It's going to be hot. We'll have a couple of extra showers here and there on Saturday. Some afternoon evening thunderstorms maybe on the strong to potentially severe side and staying very hot. The details on the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, well, we do have flashing lights. Mark mentioned this a little bit earlier. That stall vehicle we saw at 35 at Loop 1604. This is close to the northeast side. You can really see right behind me. I'm move my screen out of the way there. Yeah, you can really see the flashing lights out uh, on the distance there and uh, what looks to be a stalled 18 wheeler. Uh, not sure yet exactly if there's anybody actually in that 18 wheeler, but we do have a first responder out there on the scene. And uh, okay, uh, thank you, Fernando. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, so we have uh, first responders on the scene, so make sure that you are driving safely through the area. Obviously, 35 is a very busy corridor, so we want to make sure that we give them plenty of room to help the driver out there. But let's get you to the map, and we're really not seeing any issues in the southbound lanes where it's been reported, but still, it's a very busy commute for a lot of folks, so just remember to move over or slow down. Let's take a look at some travel times. If you're heading into the Alamo City this early in the morning, I-10 westbound heading in from Seguin should still be in the green there, folks, about 30, 30 minutes or so to the downtown area. 33 minutes if you're traveling along 87 northbound from Lavernia and for our friends down in Floresville should be about a 28 minute commute. But as we get one last look here, we're actually starting to see a few more flashing lights out there at 35 at loop 1604. I'll get on the phone with our friends at Transky to find out if there's anything else that's being reported out there. But this is also an area where we have a lot of active construction. So we'll find out at the very latest and bring that update to you coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. New this morning, Bear County Sheriff's deputy shot and killed a man last night after the suspect fired several rounds from an AR-15 style rifle while deputies were responding to a home disturbance. This happened on the far north side of the county. Our Sarah Costa joins us live with the latest. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Steph. Yeah, that shooter, a 39-year-old man, is dead, and no one else was injured during that deadly shooting. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar gave an update late last night and said there were two children inside the home when this happened. Deputies were called around 1030 last night to the 3700 block of Forthia. That's not far from Smithson Valley Road and Bulverde Road for a home disturbance call. Sheriff Salazar says deputies were talking to a woman at the door. At the, at the home by the front door when shots were heard from inside. One deputy took cover by his vehicle. The other deputy and the woman ran to the side of the home. Sheriff Salazar says that's when the 39-year-old man fired several shots from an AR-15. It isn't clear who he was shooting at, but that's when deputies asked the man to put the gun down. When he didn't comply, Salazar says the deputies fired back and killed the shooter. 
Again, the deputies, the woman and two children that were inside the home during the shooting were not injured. Those deputies have been put on administrative leave as protocol as this investigation continues. Mark and Steph. Phone calls to the 988 Suicide Prevention Lifelines have skyrocketed since it was released about a year ago. That's a huge win. It means more funding is needed for expansion as Mental Health Awareness Month begins. Courtney Friedman spoke with a San Antonio man who helped take the issue to the Texas legislature. I lost my dad to suicide in 2010. I kind of fell into my own suicidal ideations and self-medication and things like that. Greg Watson overcame those dark times and turned them into purpose. He now sits on the board of San Antonio's chapter of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Being able to bring that to light to the people that can actually make a huge difference. People like state lawmakers. Watson was one of 35 advocates who met with 60 state legislators in Austin last month to push for a couple bills. One bill would support the 988 suicide lifeline that was established last year, which since has been flooded with calls. The bill would increase the number of centers answering those calls. San Antonio doesn't even have one right now, right? As a major metropolitan area. So if you dial 988 from here in San Antonio, you'll likely actually be connected to someone in Houston or in Austin. They, of course, can offer you the local resources, but this funding could expand the infrastructure right here in San Antonio. The bill is set and requesting a sort of advisory committee to help establish that infrastructure and kind of develop a certain level of standards as far as the overall service itself. The committee would tackle how callers are connected to help. The system will connect me with somebody based on my area code rather than whatever cell phone tower that I'm connected to locally. People are being connected to help centers according to their area code, which sometimes is not where they live. We were meeting with Republicans, Democrats mm -hmm. and the like. Like, um, and everybody was very receptive. Watson keeps his dad in mind as he plans to keep pushing for change. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Nearly 300 people are now in custody, all part of a global drug trafficking crackdown. U.S. Department of Justice says Operation Spectre targeted trafficking of fentanyl and opioids on the dark web. The international efforts span Europe, South America, and the U.S., with some suspects facing prosecution across several federal courts here in Texas. The fight against opioids is something we have been following closely as part of our series, Fighting, fighting Fentanyl. You can scan this QR code on your screen for more information. That will direct you to more information about fentanyl, what it is, how it affects your body, and how people can get, ad get addicted, who are addicted, can get some help. And in case you missed it last night on the Night Beat, our newest episode of Fighting Fentanyl is all about hope. A different program from UT Health San Antonio received a big grant to help people suffering from addiction. And right now on our website, KSET.com, you can see how that will help people suffering from o opioid addiction. 507, 68 degrees. Coming up, how a center is aiming to link all five San Antonio missions to the one-stop shop for an educational and spiritual experience. Outside with live cam, outside you will have a humid experience on this Wednesday morning. 68 degrees out at the airport. Traffic looks good on Loop 410. We'll check back in with Stephen and Mike coming up. And welcome back. It's 511. A brand new center aims to link all five San Antonio missions and serve as a starting point to an experience that also encompasses Europe. Father Carlos Velasquez, the rector of San Fernando Cathedral, says there has been an increase in people coming to visit the missions. He says 1.3 million people toured them last year, but there was not a focal point where tourists can gather. He says that's why the Archdiocese of San Antonio created this center, El Camino de San Antonio Missions Pilgrimage Center, and it celebrated its grand opening yesterday. But now, not only do we have that actual mission trail, but we have a center where they can come and take it all in. And we know that pilgrimages, they change lives, they change hearts. That's what we want. El Camino de San Antonio Missions is in partnership with Spain's El Camino de Santiago de Compostela. Pilgrims can receive credit towards both routes on their pilgrim passport, obtaining stamps from each mission church and the cathedral. 5, 12, 68 degrees. Bluetooth devices enable people from being tracked, sometimes even without their permission. Next, how Apple and Google are teaming up to stop this from being done.
when I see my mother's eyes. Love is always in her smile. There is no home like a mom. Receive a free bracelet valued up to $225 when you shop Pandora this Mother's Day. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Ready to shine from the inside out? Say yes to Nature's Bounty Advanced Gummies and Jelly Beans, the number one brand for hair, skin, and nails, with two times more biotin to bring out more of your inner beauty. Get more with Nature's Bounty. In today's Tech Bites, Apple and Google are teaming up to fight location tracking. The companies are working together to propose industry standards meant to help combat the misuse of Bluetooth location tracking devices. They're now accepting input from advocates and hope to develop a final specification in place by the end of the year. Facebook Reels will offer more personalized content similar to TikTok's For You page. Users can hit the Show More or Show Less buttons to indicate your preferences after viewing a video and then AI will do the rest. And LinkedIn is using artificial intelligence to help job hunters. The site is testing a feature that will generate personalized messages that candidates can send to hiring mess managers. The AI draft pulls information from your profile, the manager's page, the job description, and the company. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. We're just shooting the bowl on mm -hmm. staying ahead of Mother's Day yep. yes. this year, which is coming up fast. Week from Sunday. Yes, yes. Time to get cards in the mail or flowers. make those flowers purchases. Flowers are always a good, good idea. Right. Yeah, flowers are always nice. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love flowers? I, I like to get my mom a sympathy card. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Mom. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> anyway, how's traffic looking? You know what? Wow. Funny. How do we follow that? <laughs> you know, uh, thankfully, uh, things aren't too bad over here in this department. Uh, really, things have been moving along just fine. So so if you have to head out the door in the next few minutes, uh, you can expect a little bit more busy traffic along US 90 as you just saw on the trans guide camera 410 appear and vital uh, just pretty quiet there. But we still do have a stalled vehicle that's been reported along 1604 35 at 1604 uh, over on the northeast side. And that still seems to be the case at this hour, guys. But thankfully, as we get a look around town, there's not a whole lot else to talk about. We take you to our map and it looks like a crash may have popped up here. This is what I was actually trying to find a few moments ago, uh, but our map has confirmed that there there's an issue there at 35 near US 90. So we'll find out exactly how that's impacting the commute. But I'll get a closer look at that in just a minute. Do want to bring your attention here to that stall vehicle that we saw at 35 South Bend at Loop 1604. Really wasn't causing any issues, but just something to be aware of. And as a quick reminder, we have some uh, field testing work that's taking place today in Kendall County. That actually begins at 830 in the morning. Uh, that field testing is when we have crews that go out there and test the integrity of the highway and the roadways following a lot of that construction. This should take us up to 330 in the afternoon. Afternoon, and this uh, will we'll see a single westbound main lane closure right there at Russ Road. But always head over to KSAT.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there. But back here, things are moving along at 37 at Houston, and we're going to try to find out where that crash has been pinpointed, but it looks to be 35 at US 90. For now, just drive safe, Mike. Beautiful, beautiful picture. Take a look at this <coughs> one. It is from yesterday, a sunset. Boy, that's pretty. Just looks like a painting out there. Thank you very much. Love getting all the case at connect pictures, so make sure you send those in. All right, this is not the prettiest picture. A lot of clouds out there. We won't have any one of those beautiful sun rises like we had a few days back and over the weekend. And we've got a couple little sprinkly showers. By the way, last half hour I misspoke. That is Maverick County, not Webb County. My apologies. We've got a couple of these showers that are continuing to work their way to the east, but not really holding together. It looked like they were trying to, to develop into something, but sort of fizzling out, but at least uh, right around between Crystal City and almost toward you Valley, you're getting a little bit of light rain and that's about the extent of it. And then a few more further on down to the south. But again, very, very light stuff of you know, just that's about the extent of it. And that's all I can say really on this. Just a few of those light little sprinkly showers around. It's not going to be anything widespread by any means. Victoria, two miles visibility, five at Gonzalez. Those are the only spots really showing any uh, any fog as of right now, reduced visibility. Temperatures stay steady all morning long. There's that 10% chance for 
Again, a couple of those sprinkles out to the west there, maybe some mist, and then we are going to see more sunshine today, a bit more than what we saw the past couple of days. That's going to get us up into the mid 80s later on today, which will be, well, normal high is 83, so going for 84. All right, computer models, and today we've got clouds this morning, a bit more sunshine later on this afternoon. Now we go into tomorrow, and this is where, and it really depends on which computer model you look at. We start off about the same situation. Going into the evening hours, though, this one, uh, does have a couple of, of these storms trying to develop down to the southwest and then working their way basically across the southern half of our area. And this is going into late tomorrow night, early on Friday morning. The other computer model showed last half hour had even a few of these up to the north. So the, the one thing that we can take away from this, it looks like a lot of the activity will be kind of confined down there to the south. Now, jumping ahead into the future again, Friday, same chance of rain, small chance, but if anything pops up, could go severe. Same thing then on Saturday afternoon as well as on Sunday. Again, we've got the chance from the Storm Prediction Center isolated to even some scattered uh, strong to severe storms, high winds and hail. Same thing on Friday. And again, once we get into tomorrow, because that only goes out three days. I think then it's going to be uh, on Saturday as well with that risk for severe weather. 78 degrees at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 84, partly cloudy skies later on this afternoon. Again, tomorrow late, there is the chance for some of those storms. Not a great chance for rain, but something pops could become strong to severe. Same thing Friday, same thing on Saturday. And probably not as much of a severe chance on Sunday, but again, a very, very volatile atmosphere the next couple of days, like we had, say, for instance, last Friday night. There were only a couple of storms out there, but boy, oh boy, they were big and they yeah, were they strong were. and severe. So if it happens, it would be. Yeah, it'd be strong. Impactful. Right. Okay, thank you. 521, 68 degrees. Next, how the Writers Guild strike is already affecting what television viewers are seeing. Pick three numbers, 969, Fireball 9, daily four numbers, 1274, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 5, 7, 13, 18, 24. And your Mega Millions, 3, 15, 16, 32, 41, Mega Ball 9, Mega Flyer 2. Good luck. We have an idea of what the show is going to be. Right now, the idea is reruns. Some late night programs, such as The Late Show with Stephen Colbert and Jimmy Kimmel Live, began airing repeat episodes after the Writers Guild of America went on strike. It's the first impact on viewers of the WGA strike, which could shut down production on most television shows and keep films from going into production. The best Gran Turismo players in the world get a chance to compete in professional racing. Dude, this is real. I'm sorry. You really think you're going to take a kid who plays video games in their bedroom, you're going to strap them to a 200 mile an hour rocket. It'll tear them to pieces. Here's your first look at Gran Turismo, about a teenage gamer who wins a series of competitions to become an actual professional race car driver. David Harbour, Orlando Bloom, and Archie Medecqui star in the action film, which is based on a true story. Gran Turismo races into theaters August 11th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Let's look out there with a live cam, nice and, you know, calm. We're in the 60s this morning and expecting things to warm up, but I guess what we're kind of watching out for is more tomorrow, the chance of storms, but we're going to check in with Mike very soon. Yeah, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, perhaps a little bit on Sunday, because it's one of the situations, you know, the past couple of weeks where we have been talking about how the atmosphere is going to be really, really volatile. Odds of rain are not that great, but something pops, it's going to get strong very easily today. No, that's not in the in the offing. We're starting off, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning. Pretty much same situation we had yesterday. A lot of clouds out there. It is very warm. It is very humid. We have temperature right now standing at 68 degrees. That's where we were all morning long yesterday. Dew points at 65. So yeah, you notice the humidity when you step outside south to southeasterly wind at three miles per hour. A little bit of fog off to the east. Victoria's now dropped to just three quarters of a mile. Still holding at five. Beeville, Gonzalez, six, LaGrange. We'll just have to watch as this tries to work its way westward throughout the course of the morning. 
like we had yesterday. And we still have these a uh, couple of showers out here to the west, right around Carrizo Springs, Crystal City, just to the uh, south of Uvalde. Everything is sliding to the east, but notice how it's just a couple of light showers. Yeah, you're getting some more rain, which is fantastic news, but that's pretty much it as far as the rest of the area. This is all just a little bit of clutter. So just taking into account those few little showers out there to the west, which uh, won't make too much of an impact. Everybody is very consistent with these temperatures. Thanks to the cloud cover, thanks to the relatively high humidity out there. Everybody's in the 60s for dew points, which means, yeah, you, you notice the humidity somewhat. And we do have low amounts of all the allergens. Of course, the updated count is going to come out in about two hours. 78 at noon, 84 for a high temperature. A little bit more sunshine than what we've seen the past couple of days, and that will get us up into the mid 80s. Normal high is 83, so we're in the ballpark of where we should be. And then 78 later on tonight. Really no chance, other than those few showers this morning, of any rain. We'll start off with a couple of little sprinkly showers the same way tomorrow. Then in the afternoon, that's when, and, and by the evening hours, we're going to have to be on the lookout for any storms to develop. Going to show you yet another computer model for which has a different take on what's going to be or may happen tomorrow. And then we'll also take a closer look at the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on, sir? Yeah, big problems over here, Mike. Unfortunately, 35 at US 90 is a big issue for drivers this morning as well as first responders. We do have a multi vehicle crash that's been reported in the area. And in fact, you may have received a push alert on your phone just a few moments ago, but you see that right now the lanes are open at this hour. However, we do have uh, first responders that are out here this scene, but notice there are more flashing lights out in the distance. I spoke to our friends at Transguide. It does look like this crash scene is pretty much spread out throughout 35. So I would encourage you avoid 35 southbound if you can right now. We do have that multi vehicle crash. I'm going to update our map here to reflect that, but you see right now we have a portion of that at 35 southbound near Nogalitos and US 90. A little bit of orange is building out there already at 531 this morning, so that's not a good sign. Obviously, Obviously, folks are getting out on the roadways and they're going to see this multi vehicle crash. Avoid that area is my suggestion for now, and we'll see what we can do about finding different solutions for you. But let's hope everyone is doing OK right now. We don't know how many vehicles are involved, but again, we do know that there are multiple at least at this hour. So we'll take a drive over here. That stall that we've been talking about for a little while, 35 Southbound at Loop 1604. Uh, I'm still seeing that being reported by Tech Stop, but I'm not really too concerned with it, only because we're not seeing a slowdown at this hour. So just check your vehicles and make sure to move over our slowdown. The wide look of the map really just shows the same thing. Plenty of green and a lot of the active construction, but the big issue is going to be right over here at 35 at US 90. This is just one of the shots. We actually have multiple provided by Transguide to really reflect uh, what they're seeing out there. So 35 at US 90 is one of those shots. Here's another shot at 35 at Nogalitos, and then we also have one more shot here to show you, and that's 35 at Powell. So again, this crashing is spread out throughout our Transguide cameras along I-35 southbound. Avoid this area if you can. We're going to work to get some details and look for different solutions, but let's hope everyone is doing okay out there. Mark. New this morning, Bear County Sheriff's deputies respond to a disturbance call that ends in a deadly shooting. It happened last night just before 1030 at a home on Ferithia, not far from Smithson Valley Road and Bulverde Road in far north Bear, nor Bear, north Bear County. rather. According to Sheriff Javier Salazar, deputies were talking to a woman at the home when shots were heard. We're told the woman and the deputy got out. The suspect walked out of the home and started shooting more. Deputies fired back, killing the suspect. An investigation is underway. Three people are in the hospital this morning after being hit on 1604 and Hebner Road. According to San Antonio Police, there was a two-vehicle accident around 1130 last night. The drivers got down to exchange information, and that's when another vehicle crashed into the back of them. One of the victims is in critical condition, while the other two are expected to be fine. Bear County Sheriff's deputy sees over $9,000 worth of methamphetamines during an arrest last Friday. This happened on the county's southwest side, and our Sarah Costa joins us live with the very latest. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Steph. It wasn't just a bag of meth found in plain sight, but also a stolen firearm. The woman responsible is now behind bars. She is 29-year-old Jacqueline Gutierrez, who BCSO deputies say was wanted for felon in possession of a firearm. When BCSO Organized Crime Division arrived for a search warrant on the home on Hollenbeck Avenue near Quintana Road in the, on the county's southwest side last Friday, they found the large bag of meth in plain sight. So during the search of the property, deputies also found what well, they found the 451 grams of meth, drug paraphernalia, and a stolen handgun also on property. 
The drugs were worth around $9,000. Gutierrez is charged with possession with intent to deliver over 400 grams of meth and two counts of felon in possession of a firearm. Gutierrez is being held without bond at the Bear County Jail. Mark. Ranchers in the St. Hedwig area on edge after several shootings of cattle. And now the National Animal Rights Group PETA is joining efforts to find out who's behind the shootings. The organization offering a reward to help track down the person or persons responsible. A rancher says her cow was just shot feet from her home in St. Hedwig last week. Investigators are looking to see if the cases are connected to several other shootings of cattle Bear County is handling. Why they would want to shoot it, you know, innocent animal, um, it's just beyond me. St. Hedwig is primarily a ranching community, so you start damaging people's property or, or, or killing their livestock, they're going to be extremely concerned and they're not going to take that lightly. Now cattle, of course, a costly investment for ranchers and some of them it is their livelihood. You can call BCSO at 210-335-6000 if you have any leads on who is responsible for these shootings. The parents of two missing girls found dead in Oklahoma are now speaking out. They say their daughters were at a sleepover down the street and they never imagined the danger the girls were facing. They were among seven bodies later found on the property. Here's ABC's Andrea Fuji. This morning, we're learning more about the seven bodies found on this Oklahoma property belonging to a registered sex offender. Among them, police say two teenage girls recently reported missing, along with the bodies of 39-year-old convicted rapist Jesse McFadden, his wife, and three children. It hasn't hit me just yet. I still think she's standing right behind me or going to walk down these steps. Nathan Brewer's 16-year-old daughter, Brittany, and her friend, 14-year-old Ivy Webster, were at a sleepover at the McFadden's home. Their families say the girls were friends with the McFadden's teen daughter. When Brittany and Ivy didn't come home, an Amber Alert was issued. It was so hard because I feel like at that point I knew. What they say they didn't know was that McFadden had been released from prison in 2020 after serving 17 years of a 20 year sentence for rape. He never did anything personally where we were like, uh, okay, so we you had, didn't know his history. No, we had no idea. Now the girl's parents are pushing for change. Any second that I could save to save some other children to make a change is what I want to do. And if I can tell Ivy's story and tell her story, and get our government officials and everybody to start speaking out loud and keeping these pedophiles in jail. A woman who testified against McFadden, leading to his conviction in 2003, says he never should have been released from prison. He had actually held a knife to my throat that night and told me if I told anybody that he would kill me. McFadden was still entangled with the law. He was due in court Monday, the day the bodies were found, on child porn and other charges. McFadden's mother-in-law says his family didn't know about his criminal past until just a few months ago. As for the seven bodies found, police are still investigating how each victim died and who's responsible. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Saturday Night Live is one of the first TV shows to be hit hard by the Hollywood writer strike that's now underway. Members of the Writers Guild of, the, of America hit the picket line on Tuesday. The day after the union could not reach a contract deal with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Writers are fighting for changes to staffing, compensation and residuals as the entertainment industry shifts towards streaming services. The strike could immediately stop the production of several movies and TV shows. Rehearsals took place in the early hours of the morning in London for the preparation of King Charles's coronation Saturday. King Charles will be crowned at Westminster Abbey. There have been 38 monarchs crowned at the Abbey. Coronation is set to be shorter than that for his mother 70 years ago at about two hours long compared to almost four hours in the past. Happening today, Judson ISD will break ground on construction for a brand new middle school. The new campus will be in the northern part of the district near Wortham Oaks Elementary. It will be designed to serve up to 2,000 students. It should be done in the summer of 2025. That funding comes from the November 2022 bond. 539, 68 degrees. The owner of Moses Rose's hideout is taking legal action. Next, why he has set, received and rejected several offers for his property. And outside with live cam, do we need the umbrella today or tomorrow? What about the day after that? We'll talk to Mike Ostrage coming up. It's Wednesday and you're watching GMSA.
Just about 542, a downtown bar now taking legal action over the latest offer for its property. The owner of Moses Rose's hideout has received and rejected several offers for his business right there by the Alamo. The city and its partners have threatened to initiate eminent domain proceedings if a deal is not made by May 8th. Well, Vince Cantu says the final offer for his bar, Moses Rose's, is about $4 million too low. The latest offers of $5.26 million and includes $4 million for the building plus projected lost revenue for selling the business. That was determined by a third-party appraiser, RSI. Now, Cantu and his attorney are accusing the city, Texas General Land Office, and the Alamo Trust forcing RSI to use a discounted portion of the bar's projected lost revenue. They argue without the change, the valuation would have come out to $9.02 million. They tell us the accusation is based on a tip from an anonymous source. How confident are you that this source is accurate in what they're telling you? 100%. They are very close to this matter. Uh, this should be just a fair business deal, but evidently they don't want to honor their own agreement. Contu and his attorneys say they filed a lawsuit in the hopes of having the third party appraiser and the Alamo Trust go under oath. Time now, 543 and 68 degrees for now. Mental accounting, it's something we all use to help us think about money and spend it accordingly. Next, how we can benefit from it instead of it letting it becoming a problem. 546, many of us spend a lot of time thinking about money, but our mind often treats our money in different ways, which can have an impact on our financial well-being. ABC's Justin Finch reports on the idea of mental accounting and what you can do about it. So let's say it's payday at your job and you get your paycheck for the work you did during the past week. And let's say it's also your birthday and someone gives you money as a present. How you think about those two amounts of money you've just received is called mental accounting. There's evidence that people spend money that they earn themselves much more deliberately than money, for example, that they're given uh, as a gift. Your brain may think about your birthday money as discretionary money, money you can use for something fun like new clothes or a vacation. And you might think of your paycheck as essential money, money to use for things like food and the rent. But in your family budget, all money is the same. Thinking about discretionary money and essential money differently can cause problems. So what people might do is they might spend all their money in their discretionary accounts and then be short in their central ones when they should really cut the budget in the discretionary one and move it more toward the essential one. Another example of mental accounting is when you keep money in a low interest savings account while also keeping an outstanding balance on a credit card with a high interest rate. So what can you do to keep mental accounting from becoming a problem? Experts say to take those mental accounts and make them physical. Start making lists of all the things you have in your head and the money you have available to spend and start tracking it on an ongoing basis, especially when it comes to the dynamic of those optional things versus those more essential things. Valuing all the money you receive the same way can help you think about your finances more clearly and help your bottom line. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Now 548. Check back with Stephen Cavazos. So we have that multi-vehicle multi crash that's been reported along I-35 southbound near US-90. And uh, we're really getting a shot now of traffic just slowing down. Now, a uh, very different shot from our friends at TransGuy because we aren't seeing any flashing lights here at 35 at Powell. But notice we still have at least one lane blocked off with a few road flares. So we'll find out exactly how long this is going to take to clear up and really how uh, many vehicles were involved because we know that, again, it was reported as a multi-vehicle crash. And that's why our map has picked up two different incidents. That crash was really much spread out throughout 35 southbound near US 90 or Nogalito. So uh, we're going to continue to watch that closely, but there is a small buildup that continues to build out there. So we'll watch that area. And I have been keeping a close eye here at 35 southbound at loop 1604 because we still have that stall 18 wheeler that's out there. It's very dark, but we know 35 is a very busy spot, so make sure to move over or slow down. We do have crews out there on the scene. Wide look at the metropolitan area back here in town. It's really going to be a lot of that active construction taking 
taking place throughout this week as well as tonight because this is what's happening here along 281 here in San Antonio. Barrier work will begin and take us all the way up till Friday, May 5th. The work is overnight, so watch out tonight because we'll see it wrap up around 5 in the morning, alternating northbound main lane closures right there at Hildebrandt Avenue. But back here on um, 35, uh, we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this. I'll speak to our friends at Transguide. They have been uh, looking at the scene with multiple camera angles, so this is, this is just one of them, but we do see traffic is moving very slowly through the area, so just be sure to watch out. Thanks for the heads up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be a problem later on. Yeah, so hopefully yeah. it wraps up soon. Fingers crossed. Yes. All right, today is going to be kind of a tranquil sort of a day. Just really not a script. We're going to have a little more sunshine. And uh, first of all, starting off, I love that picture. What a gorgeous, gorgeous rose. It's beautiful. Yeah. I wish I could get some out of my yard like that. Anyway, that is beautiful. Great yellow rose of Texas. Thank you so very much for that picture. And we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Uh, not really seeing anything as far as fog in and around town, nor any sprinkles in around the metropolitan area. But obviously we do have some of these down here to the, uh, the southwest. And just a few light little showers right there around Crystal City, just past the Carrizo Springs. There were some, uh, maybe heading in toward Uvalde. U Uvalde you might see a little bit of a uh, shower right there. Just a couple of sprinkles right to the north of Brackettville. A few more just to the south of Eagle Pass and some sliding in toward I-35. This is not really anything, any big deal at all. And then, like I said, in and around town, this is all just a lot of clutter. There could be a little bit of mist out there this morning. Really haven't seen anything. Now, visibility, New Braunfels has dropped down to one mile right now. Gonzalez at five. So like yesterday, we're starting to see the fog developing off to the east and then it's starting to work its way a little bit further off to the west. Victoria is down to just three quarters of a mile visibility. We are going to continue with cloudy skies, steady temperatures, a couple little sprinkles here and there and that fog here and there this morning. It's just going to be very patchy, but it's going to get thick in spots. We'll be up to 78 at noon, a little more sunshine around here. And then we top off at 84 today. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I think more sunshine than what we've had the past couple of afternoons, which will get us to 84. Still plenty of humidity, but the nice thing is we're not that far from normal, normal being 83. So here's another computer model. I've been showing different ones each and every half hour uh, this morning. This one does have a few scattered showers around the area tomorrow morning and then basically just cloudy skies throughout the day. And then we get into the afternoon hours. A couple of uh, cells trying to pop up out there to the west, but this one is not very bullish at all on anything trying to fire up. Maybe a couple of those storms by late tomorrow night off the mountains of Mexico there down around Eagle Pass, but that's it. So this again, computer models are nowhere near an agreement as to what may or may not happen tomorrow night. So very low chances for rain, but if something does pop like this one doesn't even have any rain chances hardly tomorrow night. But again, if something does crop up, could be strong to potentially severe. So that's why we do have that severe threat tomorrow as well as Friday. And uh, my guess would be once we hit tomorrow, then Storm Prediction Center would also add in for the third day being Saturday, a uh, severe threat. 78 degrees at noon today, mostly cloudy skies, high temperature 84, partly cloudy. So nice looking day, still some humidity out there. Tomorrow we are going to have a few, you know, little showers kind of scattered around the area and then a few uh, thunderstorms later on in the late afternoon evening hours. Again, low rain chances, something pops, though, could become severe very easily. High winds and hail, same thing Friday, uh, same thing Saturday and a few leftover showers. We still have rain chances even going into the first part of next week. Hot this weekend. Um, great news, though. I love seeing rain chances all across the board there. So not everybody's going to see it, but at least there's something going on. Oh, well, watch out for it. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 553, 68 degrees. Here, winning lotto numbers, pick three, 969, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 1274, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 5, 7, 13, 18, 24, and Mega Millions, 315, 16, 32, 41, Mega Plier 9, uh, sorry, Mega Ball 9, Mega Plier 2. Coming up here on a Wednesday, we're following that breaking news and the suspect in that mass shooting that left five neighbors dead in Texas, now arrested and in custody. How police tracked him down and where they found him. We'll have all the details. And then the Biden administration sending 1,500 active duty military troops to the southern border ahead of an expected migrant surge. We'll have the latest on the reaction to that move this morning. And those stories and so much more on GMA.
Local headlines are coming up, plus a look at your local forecast. And right now we're looking at TransSky and the camera shot I'm seeing, yep, right there, I-35 and Powell. No problems to report there. We've got your Wednesday forecast, as I said, coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Thanks for starting your day with us.